Hi, I have lots of interesting numbers to share with you. Did you know that half of the Kotlin server-side developers choose Gradle with Kotlin Script as their build system? Stay with us to hear more insights about Kotlin and for a quick overview of the most interesting news in October. Before we dive into the content, I'd love it if you could do me a favor. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell button for notifications. We plan to release many exciting videos in the upcoming months, and you can make sure you will be the first to see them. The top story this month is definitely the Kotlin Premiere online event, which took place on October 19. In the keynote, we revealed all of the major plans and announcements from the Kotlin team, and in the Q&A session after answered your hottest questions. Let's have a quick look back at the main highlights from the day. KMM goes beta in spring 2022 with lots of improvements in memory management, tooling stability, and build setup. The new Kotlin compiler is named K2 after the mountain and chose twice the performance on real projects. Compose multi-platform for Android, web, and desktop goes stable later this year. Kodana for JVM, a JetBrains static analyzer with full support for Kotlin, is stable and free for everyone. The number of Kotlin server-side developers has increased by 40% over the last year. And we've announced Cover, a new Gradle plugin that measures code coverage for Kotlin code precisely. Kotlas, a serverless app framework, reaches all 0.2.0, which adds support for Microsoft Azure in addition to AWS. Those are just a few of the announcements that we've made during the keynote. You should definitely check out the full video if you want to know more, if for nothing else than to check out how stunningly beautiful it is. The event is not over yet. We will keep posting new videos about Kadana, Cover, KMM, K2, and other things that were presented. Subscribe to the channel and you won't miss a thing. If you were to ask me what my favorite announcement from the event was, I definitely point to the announcement of our new mascot. Here is why. It's cute, it's hip, and it can make everything it touches better. Just look at the event keynote. Without the mascot, we wouldn't have been able to make it. You can also ask the mascot for help and use it in your own events, talks, articles, and any other sort of activities you like. We've prepared some guidelines and templates to help you out. The only detail that is still unknown is its name. Help us find it out by sharing your ideas in the comments to this video. We'll put those that get the most likes on our shortlist. The key to compiler is what everyone is talking about. For those of you who want to know more about it than that it will make Kotlin incredibly fast, there is a great explanatory video from Svetlana Isakova. Watch it to get more insight about the different parts of the compiler, learn some compiler theory, and find out about the specific differences between the old compiler and the new compiler. A lot of data-heavy tasks, as well as optimization problems, boil down to performing computations over multidimensional arrays. Folks in the Kotlin data science team just released their 0.2 version of the Multic library that aims to serve as a foundation for such computations. The new release brings the API for reading and writing CSV files, operating over complex numbers, solving systems of linear equations, and many more. If you are already into Kotlin and want to use it for your data science tasks, you should try it out. A year ago, we started a regular Kotlin multi-platform survey to collect your feedback on sharing code with Kotlin multi-platform, learn more about your use cases, and understand how we can improve the technology. And I'm happy to share some of the insights we got from the latest edition of the survey. KMM is used in very different types and sizes of companies, from one-person companies and startups to huge IT corporations and big product companies. Almost half of the adoption cases are situations where there are both Android and iOS parts that were already released. 
The most common reason people gave for adopting KMM was the desire to have consistent logic across iOS and Android apps. Wanting to speed up the development process was second. Almost half of the KMM users share more than half of their codebase. Networking and data serialization are the most popular logic pieces to share. On almost a third of all teams, Android and iOS developers contribute equally to common Kotlin code. Mobile engineers are beginning to speak the same language. 98% of production KMM users are satisfied with the quality of their app after KMM adoption in terms of app performance, binary size, and appearance. I like to start my day by reading Kotlin mentions on Twitter. And I'm so happy to see that this autumn was full of Kotlin multi-platform library releases. Among them are Arrow, Coin, Okaya, and Epilon. Our recent library author study proves that the multi-platform ecosystem is rapidly growing. 42% of server respondents already develop multi-platform libraries, and 23% want to do so in the future. It's an exciting time to be a Kotlin multi-platform developer. That's all for the Kotlin news for October. Subscribe to our channel, click the like button, and suggest mascot names in the comments below. Remember, new Kotlin videos are being released on the Kotlin channel every week. Goodbye, and have fun with Kotlin!